water from the Starkfontein Dam tomorrow. We are joined by the spokesperson for the Department of Water and Sanitation, Sputnik Ratao. Thank you very much for joining us on SABC News. Thank you for having us. Now, how much water are you planning to release uh, from the Starkfontein Reserve? Um, it will depend on, 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 on what the status uh, continues to be because married to the fact that we will be releasing this water, we are expecting that there will be rains uh, between the middle of November and the end of December. And that is why also we are not just releasing all the water you know, at once uh, uh, from, from, from Starkfontein. We, we will still want to, to leave some water in the reserve. And that is why the period that we will be actually looking at releasing this water is between tomorrow the 7th of, of, of November and the end of December. Now, this is a really big deal. Um, it, it's, it's, it's happening at a time when South Africa has seen a major drought. What's the significance of this decision that the department has made to release this water? Basically, it is because, we, as, as, as you correctly put it at the beginning of the inset, that we cannot allow the Val, Val Dam to go below 25%. And we know that this past week it was already at 26%. So within our planning, we already were able to forecast that by the 7th of November, we would come to a point where we might need to dip into our reserve in order for us to be able to safeguard the infrastructure, ensure that rainwater is still able to abstract water from, from the Val Dam so that uh, they can then supply the municipalities within Gauteng, basically to ensure that we have water, not just for, for, for domestic use, but as well as for all other uh, 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 economic uses. So basically we, what we are doing is to safeguard the infrastructure around the Val Dam, but to also ensure that we do have continued access to, to this vital resource. Let's look at this number, 25%. Why is it necessary to keep the Val Dam's levels from dropping below 25%? Simply because below, anything below 25% does not make that amount of water usable to the extent that we can continue to be comfortable. And by the way, it is not just a question of whether we can still get water out of the dam, but we also have to protect the infrastructure that, that delivers this water. Because once it gets to below certain levels, it, it, uh, you know, to bring it back to, to, to those uh, levels at which it can, it can be pumped uh, comfortably can be, uh, can, can be a bit stressful on some of our, of, of our infrastructure, such that we might even get uh, to a certain extent maybe infrastructure uh, uh, failures, which we cannot afford uh, when we bring back the water to, to, uh, to full throttle. Now, this reserve dam was opened more than 36 years ago. When was the last time water was released for, uh, from the dam? Yes, like, like you're saying, about 36 years ago, because basically it, it is our back pocket mm -hmm. where it is, it is mainly used and primarily used only in, term, in, in times of, of utter, utter need and mm -hmm. only when it has to actually add more to the Val Dam itself. Because we are seeing now that the Val River system itself is under stress and it's below 50%. And that has had that, that negative impact on the levels in the Val Dam. And therefore, that is basically our reserve storage. It is only to be used under, under, under certain circumstances. But also, it is, it is mainly to keep the water there in order for, the, for, for us not to experience the kind of evaporation that we, we do uh, experience in the Val Dam, simply because of the designs. Because if we are going to allow more water to be in the Val Dam over a longer period, in this heat, we will experience more evaporation, which is not helpful. Now, we've looked at the Gauteng province extensively. What about the rest of the country? How is the situation like there? Well, when we look at the the, the, the rest of the country and, and look at our national average. Our national average is at about 48, 49%, which is below 50%, which is not quite acceptable. But Gauteng, you must remember, has, is, is some kind of a, uh, a journey come lately in, into, into this situation. We know that uh, provinces like um, uh, KZN, Limpopo, Free State, Northwest and the Northern Cape were the first ones to be hardest hit. Mm -hmm. And when cabinet made a decision to, to declare uh, all other provinces bar Gauteng as uh, uh, drought disaster areas, that still meant that Gauteng was still a bit, a bit comfortable. Not completely com comfortable, but we were still able to, to have sufficient water for us to, to be able to survive. That, uh, that being said, uh, on the 12th of August, uh, the acting director general, who is the accounting officer at the department, then uh, uh, gazetted you know, water restrictions for Houghton province 
considering the fact that uh, KZN had already had uh, restrictions in place, mm -hmm. Free State already, the Western Cape as well. So this has, has, has brought us to the situation where we, 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 we are saying, even though we, we, are, we, are, we are not in, in, in a complete disaster, but we are in a situation where we need to replenish our, 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 our water levels, especially at the, at the Valde. Just finally, let's look at the actual process of releasing this water. I know in some of um, the documents that you sent about this process was, you know, avoiding flooding, especially in informal settlements. Can you take us through that briefly? Yeah, what, what, what is going to happen is that we will be releasing this water tomorrow um, and releasing it at a level of about 20 uh, 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 cubic meters per second. Uh, which we will uh, um, uh, maintain until somewhere the beginning of, of December when we will raise that, 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 that level to about 70 cubes and then bring, taper it off towards the end of December because we are hoping that at the end of December we should close off the, 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 the Sterkfontein uh, 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 dam again so that we do not have water flowing from there. But what we are seeing as well is that we need to make sure that even as the water flows, we, we ensure that people that are living along the pathway of, 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 the, of, of the water will not be uh, adversely uh, affected. That is why we have requested the farmers along the, 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 the route uh, to remove their equipment, to remove their livestock, just so that if in case there is flooding, we do not have the kind of uh, uh, repercussions that we, 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 we saw previously when we had flooding in some of our areas. Now you've got the city of Joburg um, that said that it's going to impose fines on people who do not save water or who continuously um, use water carelessly, for lack of a better word. What is the responsibility of us as users, as citizens, to ensure that we never get here again? You know, despite, despite the drought conditions, um, but I mean, it's been said that Joburg residents have to save about 15% of water. We're only saving about 1%. So we're still very far from that. What do we need to do today to ensure that, you know, 10 years from now, we never find ourselves releasing water? I, I, th I think all of us as a nation must, mm -hmm. must remember that we are a, a water scarce country uh, in, in the first instance. We receive less than world average rainfall anyway, even on our best years. Mm -hmm. So that in itself implies that we do not have the luxury of ample water that we can just use willy-nilly. But some of the, the little things we can do do not pollute, do not uh, vandalize infrastructure, let us make sure that we, we repair you know, any infrastructure that, 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 that is failing, whether in the household, where it's a personal responsibility, or in the, in, the, in, the, in the bigger infrastructure where the municipality or even the department has got to take responsibility for that kind of infrastructure. Let us, in the, in the time that we are in, the issue of watering, can we afford to water willy-nilly? We cannot. We cannot afford to use sprinklers. We can only afford to use, uh, to actually water between dusk and early morning where we do not experience a high level of evaporation because evaporation implies you have to use more water to keep everything going. So it's those little things but it's things that we can always think about and mainly let us preserve, preserve and preserve. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll have to leave it there. All the best with the release of that water. Thank you so much. That was Department of Water and Sanitation spokesperson Sputnik Ratau joining us for an update on the decision to release the water from the Starfontein Dam tomorrow. We've got international news for you after the break. Stay with us.